I've been dancing tango long enough that a couple of my very favorite teachers that I had in the very beginning have passed. And I've been thinking about them recently and wondering how I can pass on a few pearls of knowledge they passed on to me that resonated with me both as a dancer and as a physical therapist. I would like to talk today about using contra body and take this concept into something a little more advanced that was taught to me. Contra body is opposition, opposite arm and leg. I want you to just try it a few steps walking around wherever you are, walking same arm as leg forward. So in physical therapy terminology, this is ipsilateral, the same arm and leg walking forward. It should feel very awkward. Normal gait, we have opposition. The opposite arm advances with the leg. Opposite arm and leg. And with that, our trunk has a little bit of opposition. The left shoulder moves forward, the right hip back. There's a little bit of rotation. In tango, when we accentuate this, it's called dissociation, okay? But um, contra body is one term used, opposition is another. Uh, so when we walk and when we function, those things help us keep our balance um, and give us stability when we perform, whether it's just walking down the street or at a milonga. When that falls apart, there are certain neurologic diseases where that contra body action goes away. Um, and that is a really hard and difficult thing for people and that they have a very difficult time walking when they have the same arm and leg moving forward. So Tango is actually used as a therapeutic um, intervention for some neurologic diseases. And this is one of the benefits that has been seen with studies in this dance. So in Tango, we also use opposition. Even though we have our embrace one side or the other as leaders or follower, if you've ever led, and I would um, uh, encourage any follower out there to learn to lead because you learn so much more about the dance um, other than just following all the time. When someone can't follow you, you try to find more um, uh, better cues so that they can feel what you want. If I'm trying to step forward and the follower can't find which foot I am on, I try to really sink my weight into the standing leg, wherever that is, make that very clear. And I also found that accentuating that contra body, like from my torso, it makes it much more clear for the follower which leg I want them to step with. So I'm, I'm not gonna say exaggerate what I show here, but sometimes I do exaggerate a little bit if I'm leading in order to get a follower to move in the way in which I want as a leader. So this really great um, Argentine instructor um, who's no longer with us, uh, the last private I took with him, he said that he was working a lot on opposition and on diagonals in the body. And his diagonals extended not just from the shoulder to the hip, but from the shoulder to the foot. And so for an entire private, he had me work with moving my foot and he would push just a little bit forward onto one shoulder or the other to help me find the feeling of that opposition in my dance. So for example, if I was stepping to the front, it'd be the left shoulder with the right leg. It'd be the left shoulder that he'd push. If I was stepping backwards with my right leg, Again, the left shoulder is coming forward. If I step forward with my left leg, it would be the right shoulder would get that pressure. If I step back with the left leg, again, right shoulder. So the diagonal would be from this left shoulder down to my left foot, stepping forward. The other way, it would be right shoulder, left foot, stepping to the back, left shoulder to the hip first on the diagonal, and then extending through the hip to the foot. From the side view, left shoulder, diagonal, feeling it through the hip to the foot. 
Now with that diagonal type of tension, it's almost like drawing, um, in my mind, a bow and arrow, like drawing it back, but subtly. There is no bending forward. That's not what he was talking about. And there's not a bunch of rotation to do it. It's a very subtle movement. For the side, when you're, the right leg goes to the side, the left shoulder does, doesn't come forward. It slightly goes back, very slightly. So there's a diagonal from my left shoulder to my right foot that I go through. And the same thing, the right shoulder ever so slightly goes back. And so my upper body is ever so slightly rotating to the right. That's only my upper body, not my whole body. Ever so slightly in relation to how far the leg is moving. If it's a small step, barely, barely. If it's a big step, I feel the opposition even more. Here, and I keep the opposition until I transfer weight. So this is a really cool concept to try. Uh, as a ballet dancer, the best feeling that one can have is when you hit a balance and you get stuck. Or if you're turning, and you just get stuck in the turn and you keep going. I've done six pirouettes on point getting stuck before. And it's when you hit the sweet spot. And at that moment, you can feel everything from the tip of your head to the tip of your fingers to the tip of your toes. And everything's in perfect alignment. And you just suspend in space and time. In tango, it's a feeling that you're really with whoever you're dancing with. You have a really great connection. You're really listening to and, and um, improving upon the dance in the way that you're following the lead. In the private that I took, uh, the very last song that we danced together practicing this concept, I was led in all kinds of figures, but there was one, I remember I was, there was one step to the side where I was trying really hard to think about this opposition and trying not to do too much or being too literal. And it just felt like the perfect, like subtle movement. And it felt really good. The rest of the steps didn't, you know, I wasn't like clunking around the rest of the, the dance, but that one step felt really good. And sometimes you think, oh, my partner really can't feel that. It's just me. At the end of that song, this instructor stopped and he said, that side step in the middle was a step of the private your partner can feel it, whether you're leading or following. And that is the great thing about tango is social dancing. It's all about feeling and relating to the person that you're dancing with. Um, I think sometimes uh, dancers get really caught up in how it looks. I need my foot to be a certain way. I need my lines. I'm going to show off this really tricky embellishment that I just learned. And you start to lose connection when you start focusing too much on how it looks. Um, another great teacher that I had is still with us, and some of you may know just by this expression. Um, I, when we took a private together once, I was showing off a lot when I first started dancing tango. And she said, that was beautiful, baby, but you lied to me. <laughs> so don't lie to your partner. Don't show off for the crowd. Think about what you're doing in relation to what is being led. And then leaders try to use that contra body, the same technique you use, so that the follower can feel what you would like them to do.